This video is just a little tutorial to help you get started on the best paying job assignment for Year 9 Maths. So here are the instructions on the right. The first thing is to choose two jobs, one from list 1 and one from list 2, you might like in the future. So I'm going to choose electrician and um, engineer. Draw up a table for each starting with 0 hours all the way through to 40 hours. So. What we'll start off with, we'll have a table that's got hours. We'll call it time actually, in our, measured in hours. And then we'll have our pay for uh, electrician. So that'll be in dollars. If we double click on this bit, it'll widen the cell for us. We can do it manually, but you can just double click and it'll get it to the right size, same here, and then we'll have another column for pay for engineer, and that's in dollars too, whoops, again, click it, there we go. What I'm also going to do is going to make a nice table, so I'm going to drag it down and put a border in, like so, so it looks a bit better, and then I'm going to put it says draw up a table for each day with zero hours all the way through to 40 hours. So we'll have zero hours and then one hour. You can keep typing them, three, four, etc. But the easiest way, if you're using Excel, is just highlight the two cells like so. And it knows now the difference from zero to one is one. So it's going to keep counting up in ones. So we get that cross. There's three types of crosses. The one like that, that has the arrows. The black cross like that. And the big and white cross. There are three types of crosses. We want to choose the black cross like that and we can drag it down. You'll notice next to the cross it tells you how far you've gone so we've counted to 10 so far. We keep going all the way to 40. 40. There we go. 40 hours. Okay, so the pay for the electrician. Now, it's basically going to be electrician it's $110 plus $60 per hour. So that's like saying $110 plus $60 each, well, times the number of hours. That's how we work it out. So for example, if the electrician worked one hour, it'd be $100 plus $60, so it'd be $170. If it was two hours, it'd be the $100 10, but then 2 times 60, so that'll be $230 altogether because 110 plus 120 makes 230. So we can do that manually as well. So the electrician gets $110 at the start just for getting there. If they work an hour, it's an extra 60. So that's uh, $170 now. Then another hour again is another $60, so that's $230. And now another hour again, another sixty dollars. That's two hundred ninety dollars, and so on. So you could do that all the way down through to forty. An easier way though, if we just put the formula in, the pay rate for electrician equals, and that's how we tell Excel to start calculating something. So the pay rate equals one hundred ten dollars plus sixty dollars times how many hours you work. So for the first one, it's no hours. So you just click on this cell times it by, because this column's for hours. So times this number, which happens to be zero, okay? So it works out as 110. Now, if we drag it down, again with that cross, it will also do the calculations on the next row. So instead of looking at this number of hours, if we drag it down to the next row, it'll look at num this number of hours. And if we keep dragging it down, Again, see how we got the same answers when we did it manually as well? Drag it down, looks at three hours. If we drag it down again, it look at four hours, and so on. It will count all up for us. What you can do is just get the whole thing and drag it down all the way to 40. Okay. Now, same for the pay for the engineer. A pay for an engineer equals, all it is is $90 per hour. There's no upfront free. So it's just going to be 90 times the number of hours, which is over in this column. Okay. And again, drag it down. So they get nothing if they haven't worked. But after one hour, it now should say $90.
and it does. Uh, for two hours, it should say eighty dollars, one eighty dollars, sorry, and so on. So we can drag it down. Another cool thing you can do instead of dragging, you can just double click using that cross, and it'll do the rest for you. Okay, so we've done it all. It says to graph each table. We might just skip that actually. We might just have a, um, a new table with both jobs combined because, you know, we might as well skip this bit because we're ultimately going to draw the two graphs together. Also, when I set this task, we hadn't done much on graphing, but now we've done quite a bit and the students have been drawing graphs uh, with two things on one graph anyway. So we've set up the new table with both, both jobs combined. Now we draw a graph of a combined table, so both jobs on the same graph. So to do that, all we do is highlight all the information we want to graph, just to here. So no need to include the headings, just highlight the numbers, and then we go to insert, and this one, it's a scatter. And just like this. Okay. Now you can play around with that, make it much bigger, so it's more obvious. You can also, what might look nice, is if we actually change the chart type um, just so it's this type with straight lines without all the dots. Might look nicer. Oops. There we go. So that's a bit better. Then there's a whole range of options over here with the plus symbol. We can add some what's called chart elements to get it all, you know, labelled and looking good. So we've got our axes. We want to access titles. Yes, that'd be nice. So we'll add, yep, both of those there in there. So we'll just change this to, that's going to be pay. And brackets dollars is what we're measuring the pay in. Then this one will be called the time, the number of hours in brackets. So that's done. Um, what else? We can call the series something else as well. So to do that we have to come up to format. Sorry. In design we select the data. So series 1 was the blue colour and if we move this out of the way, it looks like the blue colour was started starting at above zero, which must be the electrician who started with $110. So series one must be the electrician. So we'll edit that. And then series two, we'll edit that one and that will be the engineer. So that's looking better, tells who's who. Another thing that would look nice, um, to have way more grid lines. So instead of just at 5, 10, 15, it'd be nice to have grid lines for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as well. So we'll go here again, and that's on this box, grid lines. So we'll go over here. It's only got major ones ticked. If we put the minor ones as well, it'll probably start to look a bit better. And there we go. That's a bit nicer now. So that part's done too. Now number seven, you've got to find the number of hours where both jobs pay the same amount. So if you can zoom in and find out where these cross each other, that's where they got the same amount. Okay, because if, if we start to the left of this point, then the blue line's higher than the red line. So electrician is getting more money to the left of this crossover point. But on the right of the crossover point, the red line's higher than the blue line. So suddenly the engineer is earning more money after a certain number of hours. So you've got to find out what that point is. Again, you could, if you want to zoom, uh, get this out a bit more and look carefully. Or what might be easier is to look through the table and to see when the two numbers are equal. Um, or roughly equal there. And that's another way you can find that out. 
and that's probably a good way to get you started. Other things we've learnt in class, finding the rule, um, determining the money you would earn in 57 hours, you could just keep dragging this down, get more hours. So, oh, sorry, not like that. Highlight two of them, because now it's counting in ones, and you can drag it up all the way up to 57. And then do those as well. That's how you can answer that one. Um, oh. So number 10 is the same as number seven, except they're asking you to use the rules. So a y equals mx plus c rule you have to find. And num number 11 is just more uh, just thinking about the real world, what other factors would influence your decision in choosing a job. Pay is not the only factor you'd consider. Okay, and also number 12, what are the weaknesses in the way we are modelling earnings in this task? So, you know, this assumes this task, its weakness is really that, um, you know, we've got a constant amount of pay. But really, you might not always charge $90 per hour as an engineer, it might depend on the job. So this wouldn't always be the right pay rate for particular jobs. So it, there's some weaknesses. If you can think of something else, that'd be good. Um, okay, so that's basically uh, how to start off with this task.